Hello everyone and welcome to the Student Voice, the program that gives students a voice and allows them to speak to important members of our school and community. I'm Anthony DiGennaro and I'm pleased to have here once again the Superintendent of Wayne Schools, Dr. Mark Toback. Today we'll be discussing the new Wayne Schools app, park testing, and technology in our district as a whole. Dr. Toback, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me, Anthony. So this new app, um, what's the target audience? Students, teachers, parents? Give me some insight on that. So the target audience is everybody. I mean, okay. any, any resident of Wayne who's interested in knowing more about the school system, certainly parents, there's a tremendous amount of convenience involved with this mobile technology for parents and also for students. There's a lot of um, opportunities for students to use the app, a lot of helpful things that are there that will allow students to just download it easily on their smartphone and use it for a whole host of purposes. Yeah, I so saw you were showing me before. Um, I really was impressed with the on-course uh, mm -hmm. thing. So now it, does, it takes all the hassle out of you know, logging on, hoping there's a Wi-Fi network somewhere where you can look mm -hmm. at it. So I thought that was a very cool feature. Um, uh, why don't you give us some background on how the app came to be? Okay. So the district is aware of the explosion of the use of mobile technology. So we've been looking at this option. We, we started it as a district goal back in August because we knew about the use of mobile technology. We knew that parents use their smartphones all the time to access the district network. So we were able to see when we monitor our internet traffic what people are using to log into our network. And we found out that a tremendous amount of people are using their smartphones. So we thought that for the sake of convenience, to make things more useful for parents and for residents who use their smartphones to access information about the school district, a mobile app would be very helpful. So we also had, um, we gave an opportunity for the teachers to review the mobile app. We had an opportunity uh, for students to review the mobile app. And the other part about it is that we also had a parent focus group. So we wanted to make sure that this app was very useful for parents. And so I think at this point, we have a pretty good product. It puts together all sorts of different information in one easy to use format. It's very customizable. So the bottom line is that you're able to pick and choose what information you receive. So you don't receive information about all the schools. If you don't have children going to all the schools, right. receive news that you want to you want to know about. So did you have, um like uh, a de like people from the community create the app, or did you outsource? Like what? No, it was our IT department that had a, a major oh, role okay. in creating the app. So we had some help from the outside, but for the most part, it was our IT department, um, the people in the central office, with the help of people who gave us ideas about what would be helpful for um, for residents or, or for teachers or for students. Oh, okay, so um, why don't you describe some general features of the app that uh, okay. people can use? Sure. So the app, um, you said, it's very easy to download, and it'll be available on Google Play in June, and it'll be available on the App Store. So as far as um, for students' purposes, there's a bunch of things here on the app that, like I said, should be very helpful. So the one thing that's here is, um, is lunch menus. So that's a very simple thing. Ultimately, if you want to know what lunch is um, for the day, what's on the menu for today, you could look at your school and see what's available for lunch. If you want to know what's going on in school, we push information out to your phone. So you can also sync your phone to the app and receive all the information about the school that comes out either through the news or on a calendar. Um, there's also some very helpful things here as far as, um, for example, on course, as you mentioned before, you're able to look up your grades, your attendance. Some students may not like that because your parents are able to immediately look up your grades and attendance on any given time. Okay, there's information here um, that's available of student resources. So for example, we already have Wayne Hills TV set up as a student resource, the YouTube channel for Wayne Valley, and we also have a bunch of other online resources that are available as far as software that the district subscribes to that students can use for learning. We also have information about our new textbook series for the elementary schools, because that's, really? for the most part, a lot, a lot of that textbook series is online. So there's a tremendous amount of resources available for parents and students all through the app. So that's, that's a really cool thing. So you're planning on adding like any more features to the uh, app? Um, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to release our first version. And I'm okay. sure the next version, which we'll probably put together during the summer, we'll have a few more features and we'll keep going as time goes by, as people make suggestions, as um, you know, different ideas come our way about how to improve it, we'll, we'll keep um, trying to improve it. So what, what kind of features were you planning on adding in this next update, set up your curiosity? Yeah, well, one of the things that we're trying to do is uh, some, of, some of the parents have suggested, for example, for, for lunch menus and for other things like the calendar, mm -hmm. they would like to be able to print it directly from their smartphone to a, a wireless printer. Okay. That's something that it can't do yet. Might be able to come up with a way to do that, but right now we're not able to do that. So that's something that, that we're going to work on for uh, maybe during the summer. Okay. So where do you see this app going in the future? Do you think it'll explode? Like, what I, do you think? I, I think based on the feedback that, feedback that we receive from parents and based on the feedback we receive from a variety of other people, PTO members, I think it'll be a very popular thing that almost every resident in Wayne will have on their phone. 
Okay. Well, so uh, Wheat Schools has just recently completed the first year of park testing. There's been quite a bit of discussion amongst the students in regards to the process. Well, when we come back, Matt Farrar will be discussing the park testing and how technology has affected and become a part of our school community. Thank you for being here, Dr. Stoback. Thanks. <laughs> oh, hey, I didn't see you there. If you would answer this question at random, what are the chances that it'll be correct? A, 25%, B, 50%, C, 25%, or D, 60%. The correct answer is, there is no correct answer. If you think you're right, you're wrong. Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Student Voice. I'm Matthew Ferrara here to discuss the changing of the standardized test and technology in our school district. So first things first, Dr. Toback, do you feel that the park testing went well and that using computers for test taking went well? Okay, so that's a good question. That's a question that uh, people have asked quite a few times. So the bottom line is this. The district tested over 5,000 students, okay, starting in third grade all up to 11th grade. So 5,000 total students were tested. And we did have here and there, there were some problems. There were some network problems. There were computer problems. There were um, problems with you know, configuration of computers to the network. There were some things that happened here and there. But the bottom line is the district did an awful lot in advance to troubleshoot. We did a lot of planning. We did a lot of training. So overall, the park testing and the, the, the training that the teachers had um, enabled them to go through the testing process without too many problems. And as far as the technology itself from the district, everything went fairly well. We are aware of some format problems. So for example, sometimes when students were responding, um, they noted that it was very hard to see what was on the screen because yeah. the, the font was very small. Different problems, but that's not really anything that has to do with um, what happened here in the district. That's an issue with the park, which is also, as you know, a brand new test. Yes. So I'm sure that in the future, if there's a future for the test, um, there'll be some changes that are made. That brings me to my next question. How do you think the future of the park will uh, pan out? Do you think that it's going to be a test that's going to be further implemented, or do you think that it may be shut down, replaced by a new, mm -hmm. better version? Or So what I know is this. The state has invested over $100 million in the park. So they have a contract to administer the park for three more years. So a four-year deal, three years to go. And so at that point, I think the state will have to make a decision. I know there's already discussion. Uh, the governor has talked about his concerns about the park, Common Core. There's been some discussion at the state level about the amount of time that's taken out of the school day for standardized testing. There's a lot of parents who have uh, decided to opt their children out of testing. There's a whole host of issues surrounding the park and the Common Core, which you read about in the paper all the time. And yeah. It hasn't gone away. So um, those are all issues that ultimately have to be dealt with, and they have to be dealt with at the state level. Do you have any insight on the park testing itself, like the actual park test, if they're working on updating it and making a uh, more improved test for next year with some of the complaints mm -hmm. like font size? Are they working on that already? Well, I know that the, the park, the, the, the um, end of year assessment included feedback opportunities for the students. So the students had a chance to give park feedback about mm -hmm. the testing. And I'm sure they're going to use that information. They're going to use whatever information they collect from school districts. And I'm sure that during the summer, there'll be an effort to improve the test because ultimately there are some issues here and there that they really do need to address. So I'm sure they will, they will attempt to make an improved version. And uh, some of the students are dying to know how is this going to affect the next coming years? Is midterms and finals still out? Right. Okay. So the, the answer to that is yes. And, and I'll, I'll explain to you why. Okay. If you, and, and this is an experiment that any student is, is able to do, okay, if you want to see how this works or if, um, if you guys want to do this experiment, if you take the window that we use for park testing and you add in a week for midterms, a week for finals, AP testing, SAT testing, all the other types, ACT testing, all the other types of testing that go on, you'll, you'll quickly see that your, your entire spring, March, April, and May, would be loaded with testing It'd be gone. And, and, and you would lose an enormous part of your school year. So in addition to all the issues that people already have with the standardized testing program and the amount of time it takes for park testing and the disruption, you would add at least two weeks to that when you add midterms and finals. Yeah, it makes sense to get rid of midterms and finals. It, it weighs down, I know, on a lot of students. But I think the way they lined it out this year, mm -hmm. especially me being a junior, taking the SATs, taking the ACTs, I will agree that the way they 
a scheduled the park testing worked out very well for spacing, AP testing. I know a lot of kids would have felt cluttered if you said there was a midterms and finals, but I think the way it worked out, it worked out very well this year with the scheduling. Good. And uh, my final question is, what do you? What is your response to parents, students, teachers? who say that the park test didn't go well, it was a misdirection, and that we should continue mm -hmm. to move past it and not implement it. Right. Well, as far as the park goes, the district doesn't have a choice. So the bottom line is, as, as school administrators, the Board of Ed, the teachers, we don't have a choice. It's mandated. It's required. We have to, we have to administer park testing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's a big part of the issue. Right? There are no options. There's nothing that we can do about it as far as moving ahead. Um, what I would say is I've, I've went to every school in the district, met with parents, discussed their concerns. We took all that into consideration as we developed a plan to implement the park for the first year. But um, the bottom line is that the, the, the park and the Common Core came to New Jersey through legislative action. And if there's any mo movement to eliminate the park or the Common Core, that will also happen through legislative action. So if, if students have concerns, if students are concerned about the park, the Common Core, if they like it, if they don't like it, um, certainly, you guys are at an age now where you're 18. One, you could vote. Two, you can contact politicians and you could let them know about your feelings about the Common Core in the park and what effect that's had on the school system. So that's a very, very worthwhile thing for you to do. You're at, you're at an age now where you can, you can have those discussions. You can call, you can ask for positions, and, and you, could, you could lobby yourselves. It's not anything, I mean, the, the education community as far as teachers, and administrators, I mean, the, the state is very much aware of you know, the concerns that we have, um, but there's also, there's an op opportunity for students to also take a step. Despite like the formatting of the test, do you agree and do you think that with our generation being very technologically oriented that we're forever done with standardized, te standardized testing that's on paper? Like, do you think it's gonna be a computer age now? Like, yeah. whatever comes next, even if it's not the park test, is gonna be on the computer? I think most professional tests, whether you become an architect, or whether you become a teacher or a nurse, all that is online. And I'm also aware that there are other states that require actually online courses to graduate from high school. So it's a requirement. The state feels so strongly that students need to be prepared for online coursework that they make that. You have to take one of your high school courses as an online course. Wow. So it's, it's the wave of the future. There's no question about it. I'm sure that almost every test that you will take in the future, um, whether it's uh, for, for graduate school or for, whether it's for professional license, College, it'll, all be, it'll all be computer-based, including yeah. the SAT. That day's coming. Yeah, that's definitely great. Well, thank you so much for coming. Our next segment is about Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi has become such a big part of the world around us. It's known as the technology that keeps us all connected and also a money saver on your phone bill. On the other hand, the popular web security firewall known as Barracuda has also remains a mystery to the students around the school. Stick around for an insightful sit-down with Dor Jordan Dajewski in which he talks about the Wi-Fi situation and the ever so controversial Barracuda web filter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Matt here today asking you a question about Oreo cookies. How long does it take to make an Oreo cookie? A. 20 minutes. B. 60 minutes. Or C. 12 minutes. If you guessed B. 60 minutes, you would be correct. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Student Voice. I'm Jordan Najewski and I'm here with some insight on the Wi-Fi situation in our school and to learn more about the web filters. So, Dr. Toback, mm -hmm. with the new implementation of the Wi-Fi in our schools this year, what are your general reactions to it? Do you consider it a success, a failure, and what could be done better or changed? Okay. So, for a first year program, I think it went pretty well. And, and what, what I know is this, we, we look at our network traffic all the time and I know that, first of all, 100% of both high school campuses are now covered, where last year, at this time, there was only 50% coverage. So that's a big change. Um, two, I know that at any given time, about 700 high school students at each of the high schools are using the Wi-Fi network on the average. So there are certain peak periods where there's, some, you know, there's a, a whole lot of usage. But on the average, about at any given time, you can see there's about 700 students, 1,400 total, using the Wi-Fi network. So obviously people are using it. It's being used for a lot of different purposes. And, um, and all, for the most part, very responsibly. The students have been very responsible with the use of Wi-Fi. Really hasn't been too many problems. And so that's a great thing. Very good. Um, many students complain about low bandwidth, poor connection, or even not being able to connect to the internet. Yes. Um, are there plans to increase bandwidth or um, speed of the internet yes. throughout the schools? So um, the district is doing a whole lot this summer 
to improve our network. So there's a big investment that the district is going to make in, in the network for next year. So hopefully some of those problems will go away. But the bottom line is that I'm sure at lunchtime, I'm sure at the end of the day, before school starts, I'm sure there's an enormous amount of pressure on the network. And so as a result of that, students at those times will probably still experience some problems and some slowdowns. But I think that's inevitable when you look at how many people are trying to use the network all at one time. No, that's very true. During the lunch periods, everyone's on their phones, everyone's on their laptop. It must be a stress on the network. Speaking of the network, we have, obviously in the schools, the Barracuda web filter. Yes. This um, barring access to a number of websites, obviously some for good reasons, mm -hmm. some questionable reasons, like, right. for example, YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, with the implementation of the school's um, YouTube channel, uh, mm -hmm. WHTV, this year, right. It's blocked access in the schools to the stuff like this. Do we have plans to change something like that, or is Absolutely. it going to remain the same? Okay. So the one thing, as, as I mentioned before, students so far have been extremely responsible with using the district network, They're very responsible with using the computers, following the acceptable use policy. So that being the case, what we want to do is next year we want to make YouTube more available to teachers, to students, and we want to try to really break down some barriers as far as that goes, because on one hand, we have an obligation to make sure people are using the network appropriately. On the other hand, we know that YouTube, and there's a lot of other online resources that teachers and students use all the time, and so we feel that um, making sure that they're, I'm sorry, they're able to use those resources is a very important step for the district to take. If we're going to be a 21st century school district, we need to be able to use these commonly used resources for education. That's great to hear, and I'm sure all the students will be very happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Technology is advancing fast, maybe faster than we can keep up with it. Wayne Schools has had its hand in trying to advance our, tech, our school's technology in order to become more modern. In the age of whiteboards and markers is coming to a close as smart boards and smart pens make their debut in school. We'll be right back after these messages in which Sam Applebaum, our closing an anchor, will ask the hard-hitting questions about technology in the district and where it stands in the future of our district. Okay. Hola, how many states are in Mexico? Is it A, seven, B, 24, C, 31, or D, 50? If you guess C, 31, you're correct. Hi, and welcome back to the Student Voice. I'm Sam Applebaum, joined once again by Wayne's Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Toback, to discuss technology in our classrooms. Nice to see you again, Dr. Toback. Good to see you, Sam. So there are a lot of schools around the nation that are heading towards complete technological immersion. You know, mm -hmm. no more textbooks, no more notebooks, everything on devices like iPads and laptops. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about taking Wayne in that direction? Well, I think we're already headed in that direction. And mm -hmm. the reason I say that is because we continue to purchase um, laptops. We continue to expand our use of technology in the district. We continue to expand our network and the availability of our network resources. So what I would say is that within the next few years, the goal for the district is to be a one-to-one -one environment, which is what you're talking about, right? Every, every student right. has a computer, your textbooks, your information you have from class, all available through your computer. And so that's something that we're headed toward. It's not going to be next year. It's not going to be the year after that. But if you're a freshman now, you might be able to see that in your senior year. Mm -hmm. And in relation to that, a lot of classes this year, I know we're starting to head towards taking tests on their phones and on mm -hmm. you know, uh, programs like Google Classroom. How do you feel about that direction? I, I think that's exactly the direction we should be headed. Mm -hmm. We're using a lot of resources that are available through Google for a lot of different purposes in the district. Our employees continue to be trained on how to use Google Classroom. So I think that that's a great way to integrate technology and make it very available for students, regardless of what computer you have. So there's no issues about Mac or PC. There's no issues that you have, um, whether it's through a smartphone, an iPad. You can do all your work using Google Classroom resources. So that's a, that's a big step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And like Google, a lot of teachers have been you know, adding uh, YouTube to their lesson plans. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that addition of this new visual dimension right. to the learning process? I think that there are a lot of visual learners that mm -hmm. are out there. And so the idea is you have different types of learners. Visual learners are one type of learner. And the bottom line is that if teachers have a resource and they have something that's available, like YouTube, which mm -hmm. is a tremendous resource for teachers, there's so many educational things that are available, then absolutely they should be using that. They should, they should feel free to use that kind, of, um, that kind of resource, and it only will help the students. Mm -hmm. And finally, what are your plans for our district regarding technology next year? Okay. Well, not just my plans, okay? Mm -hmm. It's plans for the teachers, the administration, the Board of Ed. So what's going to happen 
over the summer and the next year is you're going to see the single largest investment the district has ever made in technology. So we're going to be spending almost $3 million wow. on our network for next year, um, on equipment. So for example, um, new, new IMAX for the TV studios. Okay, so that, that's something that'll be a very nice enhancement. Um, we're going to buy 100 new high-end IMAX that will make it much more um, easy. It will make it easier to render so it doesn't take so long right. for you to produce videos. Yeah. Okay, so you'll see some benefits here, but you also see benefits throughout the district. We're gonna buy a lot of uh, laptop carts for the elementary schools. The other big project is to get the elementary schools up to speed where you are at the high school. So 100% Wi-Fi coverage throughout all the elementary schools. That's a big project. And as I mentioned, network equipment, um, upgrades to our network throughout the district. So there's a whole host of different uh, projects that we have planned for the summer. So again, single largest investment, ever made in, in this district's technology. Sounds great. And are there any topics that weren't mentioned that you'd like to address today? No, I just, um, just basically, I, I think that this is an, an exciting time to be a student, Wayne, because Absolutely. over the next year, you're gonna see some really great things come your way as far as the use of technology. And ultimately the goal is to prepare you for life mm -hmm. after high school, right? And so the bottom line is that you guys are gonna be involved in using technology all the time, whether it's in college, or in work, so we need to prepare you. We're not, we're not helping anybody if we're a low-tech school district. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, the vision that the district has, and you're gonna see, uh, like I said, a real nice change for you next year. Sounds like some great things are coming up for Wayne. Yep. That's all the time we have for today on The Student Voice. Thank you, Dr. Toback, for taking time out of your schedule to discuss the pressing matters that concern our school community. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. On behalf of my co-anchors and Wayne Hills TV, see you next time on The Student Voice.